Sister Chancellor Anne Ponder. I turn to the Sister Chair and the members of the Board of Trustees, colleagues, my colleagues of the faculty and of the staff. I want to greet every single alum and all of the friends of this very special university, parents and family members of the graduates, students, and of course, the mighty class of 2008. What a great morning this is. I would call it a great getting up morning as we gather to congratulate 490 women and men who are about to commence on the next leg of their journey. To each of you, dear graduates, let me say, congratulations, felicidades, mazel tov, and you're done good. <laughs> as much as I applaud you, I know you didn't get here by yourselves. You got here because your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, godmoms, godfathers, they believed in you. Even during those moments when you weren't sure you believed in yourself. I'm also conscious that they have been your human ATMs. <laughs> but I also know that you didn't get here by yourselves because there is a faculty. These women and men who have been your partners in the precious and powerful process of teaching and learning. <laughs> And you didn't get here by yourselves because I know that there are members of the staff who have provided you with all of the support services that you have needed in order to grab a hold of and fully embrace a UNC Asheville education. I want you to know that it is really a privilege and a joy for me to join you as a member of the class of 2008. I expect to have all of the rights and privileges, Sister Chancellor. But I must also say to you that in becoming a member of your class, and that's what this honorary degree says, I also feel such deep respect for this university, your university. And I have special admiration and sisterly love for your chancellor and ponder. I also want you to know that I am proud of this university. I am happy that this university has chosen as its new vice chancellor and provost, my close sister friend, Dr. Jane Fernandez. May I ask you to stand, sister provost, to be? <laughs> now, what should I talk about for your, commence for your commencement address? I want you to know that I prepared a very serious and I think a very good commencement address. But I want you to know that I am not going to deliver the bulk of it. <laughs> but you've got to make a promise. You, after all, are a part of the generation that is so techy that I know you will keep this promise, 
that if I decide as I have not to deliver the bulk of your commencement address, you're gonna go online. <laughs> and you're gonna read it, line for line. Do you promise? Your commencement address that you're gonna read <laughs> takes on the very serious issue of lines that divide us in our communities, our nation, and our world. Your, your commencement address takes on the issues of bigotry and discrimination and charges you, my young sisters and brothers, to do something about it. Your commencement address assumes that you can. It assumes with Marion Wright Edelman that if you don't like the way the world is, you can fix it. You just have to do it one step at a time. And so I do ask you to go there, and that when you read that commencement address, that you will feel charged to do something about destroying these lines that divide us based on race, on ethnicity, on gender, on class, on age, on religion, on nationality, on sexual orientation, on differences in our mental and physical abilities. But since you're gonna read the commencement address, I'm not sure how much time you're gonna to have to get to the very end. So I thought I'd give you the very end. The end of your commencement address draws on the words of, of some of my heroes and sheroes. Well, for every hero in the world, there's at least one shero. <laughs> I want you to hear the words of heroes and sheroes of mine, words that come from women and men of diverse communities. From a Native American people, the Sioux, we hear these words, with all beings and all things, we must be relatives. Hear other words that come from, from Native American people, words that capture the value of gender equality. The words are these, we women hold up half the sky. There's a saying among Chinese people that lifts up the beauty of human diversity. One flower never makes a spring. And you know that I must, I must lift up the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr as he gave that speech that should be chiseled in the heart of every American and perhaps of many peoples of the world. Remember that he dreamed of that day when his four little children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Cesar Chavez, the exemplary Chicano leader, once said, our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sake and for our own. Many, 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 many years ago, the beloved Rabbi Hillel was asked 
by one of those students who was a smart aleck. He said, Rabbi, can you stand on one foot and say everything that is in the Torah, the sacred book of Judaism? The rabbi responded that he could. And this is what the rabbi said. What is hateful to you, do not to your fellow men and women. That is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. There is a passage in the Quran that says this. We are made into nations and tribes that we may know and love each other. I am thinking particularly now of the words of Audre Lorde, who described herself whenever she stood to speak as a black, feminist, lesbian, mother, warrior, poet. Her words that mean the most to me are these. She said, it is not our differences. It, I, it is our silences about our differences that harms us. And I end with words out of love and tribute to my sister friend, Jane Fernandez, but out of love and tribute to you, the graduates. I end with words from Helen Keller, deaf and blind from the age of 10 months of age. Helen Keller said, each of us is blind, each of us is deaf, until our eyes are opened to our fellow men and fellow women, until our ears hear the voices of humanity. Now, dear graduates, I will end, but I need your help in doing so. I'm incapable, incapable of doing what I really want to do. And so I'm going to have to ask that the entire graduating class of 2008 stand up. That's impressive. Now, and you might say I'm awfully pushy this morning. I've already asked you to go online to read your commencement address. Now I'm asking you to do something else. I want you to take your right hand and I want you to move it across your body to this left arm and about midway between your shoulder and your elbow. You got it? Down a little bit. Yeah, right there. Okay, now your left hand. Bring it across and try to make them symmetrical where they are. And if you would just you know, get a good stance. You know, maybe have to, yeah, that's good. All right, that's great. Now, I want you to do what I'm incapable of doing. You ready? Hug yourselves. <laughs> and if you want to rock a little bit, it's really all right. Because my young sisters and brothers, You've got to love yourselves, and then you've got to find ways to love the diverse peoples of our world. Thank you.